Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Samasa in Paninian Grammar and this is the first course on Samasa. We begin our lecture with the recitation of the Mangala Charana. Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Charikarti Bari Bharti Sanjari Harti Leelaya Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Charikarti Bari Bharti Sanjari Harti Leelaya In this course we are concentrated on the Tatpurusha Samasa. Tatpurusha is one of the four major types of Samasas in Sanskrit. Avyayi Bhava, Tatpurusha, Bahuvrihi and Dvandva are the major four types stated by Panini in his Ashtadhyayi in this particular order. Tatpurusha Samasa is one of the most important Samasas primarily because of the high productivity related to it. It also has got many subtypes as compared to other samasas. So Panini has in fact composed number of sutras in order to explain the Tatpurusha samasa in comparison with the other three types of samasas. The derivation of the Tatpurusha samasa can be shown in the simpler form in following way. X and Y, these are the two elements we have they are independent, they are separate, they are independent in terms of the meaning as well as the word form as well as accent. The speaker however notices they are interrelated. So the speaker then decides to merge them together in the form of one output of the nature of xy. And so xy is one element and this is one element in terms of meaning as well as word form as well as accent. Now the speciality of Tatpurusha Samasa is that in this one output Y acts as the head. What it means is when XY as a unit is to be related in the sentence with external word that relation will happen only through Y. And if X is related to any other external word in the sentence without going through Y, such a samasa will be treated as an exception and the tradition will note down such samasas as asamartha samasas. We also studied several subtypes of Tatpurusha samasa. Starting from Vibhakti Tatpurusha, we also studied Karma Dharaya and Dvigu and also Ekadeshi Samasa followed by Nay Tatpurusha Samasa. Then we studied the Pradi Tatpurusha and also Gati Tatpurusha and then finally we are studying the Upapada Tatpurusha Samasa. This is stated by the Sutra Upapadam Ating. This is 2 to 19. This Sutra has got two Padas Upapadam and a thing. Upapadam is one slash one, meaning the word designated as Upapada by 3192, Tatropapadam Saptami Stham. Upapada is termed as Upasarjana by the Sutra Prathama Nirdishtam Samasa Upasarjanam. And then Upasarjanam Purvam ensures that this Upapada occupies the initial position of the Samasa, Purvanipata. A thing is also one one, which means which is not a thing, that is which is not a thinganta. Words continued are sup and sahasupa and samartha padavidhi. So the meaning of the sutra is the following. 
any subanta whose pratipadikas are designated as upapada is compounded with any other interrelated word which is not a tinganta. I repeat, any subanta whose pratipadikas are designated as upapada is compounded with any other interrelated word which is not a tinganta. Now, what is the need of the word a thing over here? What is achieved by this negation? When we make not a thing and a condition for this sutra to apply, the only other available option through this negation is that of a subanta. And this is already available to us because of the continuation of the words. So we are forced to think that in this sutra, the basic condition of sup, sahasupa does not apply, rather sup and saha will only apply. So the structure of the output of this particular samasa will be of the following kind. We have the purva pada with the pratipadika and sup, and the second member of the compound will consist of a dhatu, added to it is the suffix krit, so dhatu plus krit, and the output would be the pratipadika of the purva pada and dhatu plus krit. Now let us study the next sutra in the section in which krit suffixes are stated in the environment of upapada, thereby leading to the derivation of the upapada samasa by the sutra upapadam ating. Now the sutra that we are studying right now is na shabda shloka kalaha gatha vaira chatu sutra mantra padeshu. This is the negation sutra. Na means not. Shabda shloka etc. This is 7 slash 3 which means when these are the upapadas. Words continued are dhatoho 3191 which means immediately after a verbal root Pratyaya, this is 311, and suffix t is continued from 3 to 16. Tatropapadam saptamistham continues from 3192. Kritating continues, and Kartarikrit also presents itself. The Sutra Kartarikrit states that the suffix t denotes the meaning karta. Kriyaha also continues which means immediately after the verbal root kru. Now, the meaning intended over here is that the suffix ta is not added in the sense of a karta to verbal root kru when upapada is related to the action of doing in the sense of a karma and when they are amongst shabda, shloka, etc. And if the compound conveys an additional sense of cause, habit and favorability, the by default suffix un gets added. I repeat, the suffix ta is not added in the sense of a karta to the verbal root kru when upapada is related to the action of doing in the sense of a karma and when they are amongst shabda shloka etc. And if the compound conveys an additional sense of cause, habit and favorability, the by default suffix un stated by 3, 2, 1, karma, nyan, gets added. So now, if the meaning is one who makes sound and the laukika vigraha is shabdam karoti, shabdam karoti. And so here, the meaning intended is one who makes sound. Shabda is related to the action of doing as karma and so this negation would apply and the other suffixes won't apply. We go to the by default suffix un and generate the compound output in the form of shabda kara. Similarly, if the meaning to be expressed is who makes a verse and shlokam karoti is the laukika vigraha and shloka kara will be the finally derived compound output. When we add the suffix an to the verbal root kru, and this an is stated by 3, 2, 1. 
Similarly, one who makes quarrel and this meaning is expressed by the Laukika Vigraha Kalaham Karoti where Kalaha is linked to the action of doing as karma and so we add the suffix an by karma nyan 3 to 1 the by default suffix and derive the finally derived compound output kalaha kara in all these examples the suffix ta would have generated shabda kara shloka kara and kalaha kara that is not generated similarly when we have the meaning one who makes worse we also have gatham karoti as the laukika vigraha and by adding the suffix an by 3 to 1 in the effect of the negation of provided by this sutra we get the compound output as gatha kara and not gatha kara which would have been the case by adding the suffix ta also one who makes enmity if this is the meaning to be expressed vairam karoti is the laukika vigraha and we do the processing by adding the suffix an and we get the compound output as vaira kara and not vaira kara which would have been the output had we added the suffix ta. Then when the meaning is who makes flattery, chatum karoti, the compound output generated is chatu kara by adding the suffix an to the verbal root kru and not chatukara which would have been the output by adding the suffix t. Similarly who makes thread is the meaning to be expressed and the laukika vigraha is sutram karoti and then the compound process happens and the output generated is sutra kara and not sutra kara if the suffix t would have been added over here. Now when the meaning is one who makes the chant, the laukika vigraha to express it is mantram karoti. Now na shabda shloka etc. this negation happens and so ta suffix is not added. So we don't get the form mantra kara, we rather add the by default suffix an. So we get the form mantra kara as the derived output. Similarly when the meaning to be expressed is who makes word, the laukika vigraha is padam karoti and the compound output is padakara by adding the suffix an and not padakara which would have been generated by adding the suffix ta but this particular sutra negates it and so the by default suffix is added and padakara is derived. Let us now proceed to the next sutra which is Stamba Shakratar in 3224. There are th two padas in the sutra Stamba Shakratar which is in 7-2 and in which is in 1-1. Stamba Shakratar is 7-2 which means when these are the upapadas Stamba and Shakrat. In is 1-1 one, one, so it is a pratyaya. So the words continued are dhatoho from 3191 which means immediately after a verbal root. Pratyayaha is continued from 311. Tatropapadam saptamistham from 3192. Kridating from 3193. Kartarikrit is also present which says that the meaning of the suffix in is karta. Kriyaha is continued which means immediately after the verbal root kru. Now the tradition has added a statement Grihi Vatsayo Riti Vaktavyam Now Stamba Shakratoho this unit has got two Upapadas and Grihi Vatsayoho also has got two elements. So there is Yatha Sankhya Nyaya and so when Stamba is compounded with Kru and In the meaning denoted is Grihi and when Shakrat is compounded with Kru plus In the meaning denoted is vatsa. So the overall meaning of the sutra is the following. The suffix in is added in the sense of a karta to the verbal root kru when the upapada is related to the action of doing 
in the sense of a karma and when they are amongst the two stamba as well as shakrut and if the compound denotes rice grain and calf respectively i repeat the suffix in is added in the sense of a karta to the verbal root kru when the upapada is related to the action of doing in the sense of a karma and when they are amongst stamba and chakrat and if the compound denotes rice grain and calf respectively so if the meaning is who makes stock stambam karoti and here we add the suffix in to the verbal root kru so we get the form stambakari as the finally derived compound output stambakari stambakari hi brihi hi similarly one who makes dung if that is the meaning to be expressed we get the laugika vigraha as shakrut karoti and we add the suffix into the verbal root kru and we get the forms shakrut kari as the compound output shakrut kari hi vatsah the calf these are the specific meanings to be conveyed by the compound next we go to one more important suffix khash the sutra is aj khash 3228 there are two padas in the sutra aj and khash aj is pi slash one of aj which means immediately after the verbal root aj which means to make to tremble aj is a causative reference which is aj plus e khash is one slash one khash means a kh is the marker which brings in an addition of m and sh brings in the term sarvadhatuka and so the suffixes get added the words continued are dhatoho from 3191 which means immediately after a verbal root pratyaha from 311 karmani 7/1 from karmanyan karma as the upapada tatropapadam saptam istham from 3192 krudating from 3193 kartari krut is present from 3467 so this says that the meaning of the suffix khash is karta so the overall meaning of the sutra is the suffix khash is added in the sense of a karta to the verbal root ag when upapada is related to the action of doing in the sense of a karma i repeat the suffix khash is added in the sense of a karta to the verbal root ag when the upapada is related to the action of doing in the sense of a karma so the meaning to be conveyed is one who makes people tremble in this meaning now we have janam ejayati as the laukika vigraha janam ejayati now jana is related to the verbal root ej as karma so now aj khash applies and adds the suffix khash to aj so upapadam ating applies upapada samasa takes place so samasa saudnya takes place so pratipadika saudnya takes place so podhatu pratipadika yo applies and am is deleted so you have jana plus 0 plus aj plus khash that is a now because khash has got sh as a marker so it is termed as sarvadhatuka and therefore another internal suffix is added so we have jana plus 0 plus ag plus a plus a and then we have jana getting an addition in the form of m because of the marker kh so we get jana m plus ag plus a plus a now this ag is substituted by aj because of the sarvadhatuka ardhatuka yoho so we have janam aj a plus a and then the sandhi rule applies and aj is substituted by aj so janam plus aj plus a plus a and another sandhi rule takes place and the pararupa sandhi happens and both the akaras are merged together and so now we get the form 
Jana Mejaya. Jana Mejaya means one who makes people tremble. And similarly, you can also derive the form Anga Mejaya. Now, there are some statements made by the tradition on this particular sutra, adding some more examples and some usages. Kash Prakarane Vata Shuni Tila Shardheshu Aja Dhet Tudajahati Nam Upasankhyanam. So, this statement says that in this section of suffix kash, the verbal roots aja, the dhet, tud, and ha are to be added with the respective upapadas being vata, shuni, tila, and shardha. So, what it means is that immediately after these verbal roots, when these are the upapadas, suffix kash is added. So when the meaning is a deer who runs to wind, who is very fast. So we have vatam ajati as the laukika vigraha. And so now the suffix khash will be added to the verbal root aja. And then we derive the final compound output as vatam aja. So vatam ajaha mragaha, a deer who runs to wind. Then, when the meaning is a baby who sucks the she-dog, and so shunim dhayati, that is the laukika vigraha, and so we have the suffix added, kash added to the verbal root dhet, and we get the form shunindhaya. In vatamaja and shunindhaya, the augment ma is added because of the marker kh. Similarly, one who crushes the season, and we have tilan to the ti as the laukika vigraha, and the finally derived compound output is tilan to the. Then we add, then we have the meaning who releases the gas, shardham jahati. In this particular meaning, we have the compound output shardhan jaha. Now we go to the next sutra. This we have already discussed in the initial lectures of this course when we talked about Asamartha Samasa. The sutra is Asurya Lalata Yoho Drushi Tapoho. There are two padas in the sutra. This is 3.2.36. So, Asurya Lalata Yoho is 7 slash 2 when Asurya and Lalata are the Upapadas. Drushi Tapoho is 6 slash 2, which is a way of mentioning 5 slash 2, which means immediately after the verbal roots Drusha and Tapa, word, words continued are Dhatoho, Pratyayaha and Karmani. Also Tatropapadam Saptam is Tham, as well as Kridating. The suffix Khash is stated over here. And Kartarikrit says that the meaning of the suffix kash is karta. So now the meaning of this sutra is the following. The suffix kash is added in the sense of a karta to verbal roots drusha and tapa when the upapada is related to the action of doing in the sense of karma and when it is asurya and lalata. I repeat. The suffix kash is added in the sense of a karta to verbal roots drusha and tapa when the upapada is related to the action of doing in the sense of karma and when that upapada is asurya and dalata. So, when we have the meaning one who does not see sun, suryam napashyati, rajadaraha, the wives of the king, they are so well protected that they do not see even the sun. Suryam Napashyati. And then, in this particular Laukika Vigraha, the word Asurya is compounded with the verbal root Drusha, 
when the suffix kash is added because of the marker sh in the suffix kash the middle pratyaya is added then drusha is substituted by pashya and so we have then the augment ma added to asuriya because of the marker kh and finally we get the compound output asuryam pashya we have said that suryam na pashyati is the laukika vigraha in which na is not linked with surya na is linked with pashyati and so now in asuriya a is an element which is not linked to an external element through the head and that's why this is called asamartha samasa so we get the finally derived output as asuryam pashya similarly one who heats up the forehead when this is the meaning to be expressed lalatam tapayati is the laukika vigraha and we add the suffix kash and then there is the other process that happens and we get the final form lalatan tap lalatan tapaha surya so lalatan tap is the finally derived compound output in accordance with this sutra asurya lalata yo drushi tapo ho to summarize the meaning of the verbal roots can be simple as well as complex or derived as is the case of causative meaning in 3228 and 36 a to 3236 is an example of a sutra stating asamartha samasa as semantically unrelated words are assumed by the grammarian to have been compounded first as an input to the other complex compound the output of 3236 has a restricted usage it does not mean that the king's wives never see sun it means that they are so well protected these are the texts referred to we continue studying the upapada tatpurusha samasa with some more suffixes stated in 32 in the coming lecture thank you for your patience